Hi, my name is Heidi Powell. I'm the found, co-founding director and co-executive director of an open book foundation. Hi, my name is Hope Herod. I am a DC public school teacher, uh, fifth grade, and I'm also on the board of an open book foundation. So an open book foundation started when uh, co-founding director Daryl Laporte and I worked at a large independent bookstore in affluent upper Northwest Washington, DC. Um, and we, no, we, we had events for children in the mornings where we invited school groups to come. And we noticed that the same groups of students and the same schools came time and time again, and that the majority of the students in the area didn't have access to this wonderful programming and the, the opportunity to meet authors and illustrators. Um, and at the same time, we had teachers coming in to shop at the store who uh, worked at other schools in the DC area uh, that were underfunded. And they were purchasing books for their classrooms and for their students with their own money. Um, so we thought there must be a way to connect authors and illustrators with the majority of students in the city and the metro area um, and complete that experience with books for the students. Um, and so we decided that the best way to do that would be to take the authors and illustrators to the students in their schools. Um, we were fortunate to get some seed funding from a small family foundation. Um, so we were able to purchase books. Uh, we established accounts with major publishers and started ordering books told the teachers who visited us in the bookstore um, and were using their own money to purchase books that we were starting this program and would they be interested in having their students meet authors and illustrators. And then we invited the authors and illustrators who were visiting the store um, to visit uh, us with a school after their morning event. Our, our purpose was simple and it remains our mission. Um, to provide access to author events for students who typically don't have access to those events, uh, to nurture a lifelong love of reading by providing books that were written and illustrated by the creators the students were meeting. And the authors and illustrators are, are the best advertisement um, for their own books. Uh, students are excited to read the book once they've met the author illustrator, they've learned a little bit about their process, um, they've maybe heard them read from the book, um, they can also imagine themselves as authors or illustrators. Uh, and um, finally, they, they share these in-school experiences um, after the author is left by discussing them with their teachers and with other students. Um, so we were giving the students books after these author events to both read for pleasure and to add to their home libraries. Um, I, I can't overemphasize enough the importance of home libraries and I know you all know this, it's the purpose of this conference, End Book Deserts. Um, a 2019 study showed that growing up with a home library boosts adult skills in literacy, numeracy, and technological problem solving. Um, students in pre-K through high school in the DC area um, are often struggling with reading. Um, many of those same students live in low-income households. Um, an open book visits uh, schools where at least 50% of the students are on free and reduced meals, but typically about 85% of the students uh, that we visit are. Um, the majority of the students are black and brown. So we are very intentional about inviting authors and illustrators who look like the students. Um, it's really important for students to meet authors and illustrators who look like them and to see themselves reflected in the books that they're receiving. They see themselves in the characters and the stories of the books that they're receiving. And I'm gonna turn it over to Hope to talk a little bit about the experience in the classroom. Yeah, as a teacher, it's always been my mission to develop readers, to be lifelong learners, and also to have a strong relationship with reading, an independent relationship of their own. Um, in order for them to have that opportunity, they have to be exposed to as many books as possible. So we've been partnering with an open book foundation for probably up until, you know, back when they first started, it's been years and years and years. And, you know, it's always been the highlight of our school year to have authors come in. Um, it's really special for to have authors come into a classroom and talk to children about their books, because you know, when you 
get kids to buy into literacy and they find books that they love, the authors sort of become celebrities. And so it's sort of a special thing to have um, an author come in just to talk to your class and to do um, a, a specific talk, but also to do a signing where they get to take home their own book and they get to add that to their own home libraries. Uh, we've been doing um, book talks with authors with all grade levels. So kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, and then my grade, fifth grade. And every single time the kids walk away so excited um, to have that opportunity. We also have partnered, our an Open Book Foundation has partnered with Little Free Libraries and that's an important um, part of our, you know, uh, my mission to get books into the hands of kids, because again, in order to develop readers, they have to, you have to give them the opportunity to choose books that they love. And in order to do that, you have to have a lot of books. So a little free library is a great way just to make it available for kids to see that there's such a diversity of content available to them that they may not have seen before. And so having that little free library has been a really great way to sort of supplement some of the author, um, the author visits that we have. Um, I would like to uh, turn over to Heidi now. Yep, to talk about programming. Yeah. So, um, so the program that Hope described, in addition to the Little Free Library, was the flat, what we call the flagship program, which was the program I originally described, taking authors and illustrators into the schools, giving every student a signed book to take home. Um, so we also have several other programs. The, the program, those programs really um, hit a broad range of students, a wide range of students, um, and we've decided that we'd also like to go a little bit deeper with our programming. So we have several programs that connect. Um, authors and illustrators with students um, more than, than the one time, more than the, the one author event. Um, these programs explore a particular aspect of the book or the author's presentation. Um, one of these programs um, we've termed extension activities. So it may be, um, it may be a pre-event activity, for example, an author study. We have an education coordinator who will go in and um, introduce the students to the author's work before the author actually comes. So sort of building excitement about that uh, visit. Um, we also um, sometimes work in conjunction with our nonprofit partners to do that. Um, and we'll also do post-event um, extension activities also to sort of deepen the understanding of that visit and deepen the understanding about the book's content. And Hope will talk a little bit later about that in um, regards to a program called Food Prints. Um, another program that we've um, instituted to go a little bit deeper is called our Artist in Residence program. And we just finished our first, our pilot. Um, with second graders at four DC public schools. Um, it was virtual because we did it last year, um, but we connected students and teachers with award-winning illustrators. Um, each student and teacher got the illustrator's book and an art supply kit. And they experienced four to five different visits with that illustrator. And they learned the technique that the illustrator used in their book. So they were able to, either use clay or draw, learn perspective, and create amazing pieces of art that were, you know, that, that they'd learned from this illustrator. Um, we're going to pilot a scientist in residence program in the fall, and it'll be modeled on the artist in residence program. So similar idea, it'll be a, a residency, you know, longer than the one visit. Um, there'll be an author who comes in who's written a book that is a nonfiction book that's STEM focused. And then they will either run an experiment with the students, they'll get the materials in advance. We're hoping to go live or in person in the in the spring. So there might be an opportunity to do a nature walk or you know collect you know plants and things like that. So something that's focused on the book, again, extending the experience and deepening the experience of, of that book. Um, I'm gonna there's gonna be a short video that's gonna give you a sense of our programming now. This could be all the water her family would have in a day. If she falls, she has to go back and get more. We want to cheer her and we want to encourage her to do it for her.
One. Two. I had three kitty faces. They used to be the same. They used to be identical. By the time I was done, the only difference, the only difference between surprise, crazy, and adorable was where I put the dots and how big I made them. Learning these details, the ones that make such a huge difference, took me a lot of time. A lot of practice remains to this day the hardest part of my job when I'm drawing this character. So that gave you a little bit of a sense of our, our programming and practice. Um, we have an open book, uh, four full-time and three part-time employees. Um, our staff is composed of former teachers, librarians, and booksellers with an extensive knowledge of books, authors, curricula, and the populations and needs within uh, area schools. Um, we're therefore really able to match an author's talents and a book's content with a given grades unit of study. Um, but also we like to make sure that we include authors and titles that make reading fun. Um, and that's one of the, the most important things that we remember is that it's not, it's not all about matching with the curriculum and the lesson, but also to uh, really foster a, a love of reading and, and a pleasure of reading. Um, and we also ask our educator partners about their students' interests so that we're sure to bring books and authors that, um, that strike their interest. Hope's going to talk a little bit about that experience in the classroom. Yeah, I just want to say how much I love that video so much because it reminds me of the time that we had an author who was also a bookbinder. And uh, they helped us, each of the children were able to make little teeny mini books. And that was so much fun for them. But I think it's, you know, there's so many reasons why this program is such an important um, part of our community. I mean, aside from, you know, the, you know, I didn't say before, but I work in a high need school with, you know, the Title IX and kids don't always have access to books. But the idea of, and I teach all black and brown students. And so live, um, an Open Book Foundation has done a really great job of uh, finding these authors who um, reflect the students. So the storylines, the characters, everything about the, you know, the book the students can read them and either learn about someone who doesn't look like them or see someone who looks exactly like them who may have very similar situations. Um, and that makes them feel very empowered because someone is able to get their story out, which also encourages students to want to get their own story out. Um, another part of this, which is a little bit different from what I was gonna talk about with Food Print, which I will in a minute, but you know, when you bring an author into a school and the kids realize how special it is, even the students who are reluctant readers are more likely to want to um, try to read a text that's more complex or more challenging than they would normally read. So it, they've already had all of this sort of build up and they've had the experience of talking to the authors, but then when they get the book themselves, they say, okay, well, I'm gonna challenge myself to read it. And that's really great for me as a teacher because I'm always looking for kids to sort of understand that complexity, you know, you, when you're becoming a reader, you sort of want to challenge yourself with complexity and, you know, uh, more complicated uh, content and more complicated plots. So that's a really interesting way that my students have sort of um, move their reading level and move themselves into longer, more challenging books. Um, we, as a school, were really lucky to partner with Food Prints a few years ago, and the author Deanna Cook, who wrote International Heidi, do you remember the International Cookbook? International Cookbook, I think. Yeah, um, came to our Food Prints classroom, and that was really special because not only were the kids able to see the diversity of foods around the world, and some of which they were familiar with but they were also able to then prepare some of the foods themselves and they were healthy. And it just helped them to sort of see that, that not only can reading be in class and something that the teacher asks you to do, but it also can be just fun. But the idea that you're marrying fun and reading with a purpose, because these are recipes. And so this is that kind of technical re you know, reading that they, may not have necessarily connected as part of literacy. Um, it's just been really fantastic to have that partnership. Um, and 
I really think that the students and even just the science connection to that is one that helps them see how just how interdisciplinary the world is. And um, it helps them sort of understand that literacy is not just something that is, you know, in the realm of our reading class. It exists all around the world and it can be so fun for them to engage themselves. Um, I'm going to turn back over to Heidi because uh, she's going to talk about how COVID has created some challenges um, and new opportunities in this past year. Thanks, Hope. And I'm going to just introduce a video that's going to show you even better. <laughs> um, when schools shifted to distance learning, uh, we pivoted to continue serving students with books and programs. And uh, we have a short video to demonstrate what we did. And what I love about it is that with our students, when we have the visiting authors, that allows them to understand that these are actually regular human beings, that these are people that they can aspire to be, that they have pencil and paper just like these authors have, and they are able to do these things. And these are things that you can do at home. You can write at home. You can dream at home. You can become a great author at home. So these are things that we can continue to do even though we're unable to be together. So whether it's a nonfiction book or a fiction book, they still are being introduced to new places, new adventures, new vocabulary. So even though we're virtual, through an Open Book Foundation, we have been able to stay consistent and we have been able to make sure that the children are still enjoying reading. Hope, were you going to talk a little yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah. Can I talk about that? I mean, the video again was great. Yeah. It made me think about, you know, it's been a hard year for all of us, for students, for teachers, for families to be home during this time. And watching the video made me think about how not only is it special for an author to come in a classroom, but um, when we were able to have author visits online, it sort of reassured students that we were having the same shared experience. You see the author's home, you see the author's cat, you see all the things that they put up in order to sort of create the, se the semblance of a normal world. And that sort of helps to reassure kids that they're not the only ones trapped in the house. Um, and I think that's, you know, and I also a couple times when we had author visits, I noticed that family members started coming to the screen to see what we were talking about and like little kids would come sit in the laps of my big kids. And it was just sort of a lovely way to uh, keep kids engaged, but also to engage the family community to see just how much we invest in their learning that this is, you know, a program like this, an organization like this would be able to pivot and create programming that's so engaging, even though you know the kids can't leave um, their homes. Um, should I toss it back to you for impact? Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. So I think we have a slide. There we go. Um, so yeah, so every year we spend about a hundred thousand dollars on books. Um, you can see from the slide the year over year increases in students served in books donated. Um, and what's not shown yet on our slide is that during this 2020-21 school year in which we were entirely virtual, um, we served over 8,000 students uh, with over 250 presentations and we donated over 10,000 books. So we, we use an, several different tools to evaluate 
um, our programming. Um, obviously feedback from students and their families and from teachers and authors and illustrators. Um, we have held educator focus groups to get feedback that way. Um, we get feedback from our board, which consists of uh, DC public school teachers and librarians, um, as well as an author. Um, so it's a nice variety of, of feedback. And we've also conducted um, surveys of um, students and teachers and authors and illustrators. Here are some of the results um, from those surveys. Um, and as Hope has, has mentioned, and I think I have too, um, you know, more students are interested in reading the book after the event. Um, and I think, and that's really, the most important thing I think that that, that we can say, um, we've re that, that these survey results reflect really the positive impact. Um, but results are really more than about the numbers. And Hope is going to talk a little bit about um, some of her experiences again in the in the classroom and working with an open book over the past past several years. Yeah, one of the things I was thinking about again had to do with. Um, the, that children will, are more likely to read the book after the author comes, but also Open Book Foundation and Open Book Foundation gives the teachers the, a library of the author's books and the classroom librarian gets a set. So not only do they feel encouraged to read the book that the author came to speak about, but once they've done that, then it's more likely that they'll go and chase after the rest of the books from that author. So it encourages them to continue the reading experience with that author because they've already made that connection. Um, I just wanted to share with you one of my all-time favorite stories. It is from several years ago with, um, we, were had, uh, we were hosting Dave Roman, who wrote Space Academy. Uh, I think it was his first book. And he came to the school and it was right after, right during our deer time. And so they always come and set up a little bit and we were having quiet deer time. The kids were sitting in the room. And um, when he came in to meet us, he was very surprised because a lot of the kids in my class were reading the book Smile by Raina Telgemeier. And he was sort of like, is this a joke? And, we were, and I said, no, they love this book. It was new at the time and I bought a lot of them and it just sort of, you know, sometimes, once, sometimes when you introduce a book, it sort of shoots around the room and everybody reads it. And at this time, a lot of kids were reading it. And he said, well, that's my partner. It was Raina Ted Telgemeier was his partner at the time. And he said, she was in the bathroom. And I said, what? She's in the bathroom? I, and I stopped the kids and I said, you have no idea what's going on, but the author of Smile is here. And the kids were so excited. And she came in and she was very gracious. She also sort of wanted to make it clear that like, this was not actually her talk, but that she would, you know, uh, assist. So we ended up getting, they did a, a, um, an illustration of her character and then Dave's character and the kids love Dave's book too. Um, and they did a signing and it was wonderful. But the best part was, I don't know how this happened, but the end of the school day at 3.15, because it was towards the end of the day or some sort of transition time, there were kids in our middle school who somehow heard, don't know how, that the author of Smile was in the building and they knew it was my classroom. So they lined up outside of the door. And when I opened the door, they said, Ms. Herod, we know she's here. We know you always have extra books. Can we get some? And it was like six or seven kids and none of my kids had left the room. So I don't know how it got out that she was in the building. But not only did those kids walk away from a, you know, with a, a book signed from Dave Roman, but it was also signed by Raina. And she was just, they were both so gracious and wonderful. And that just sort of speaks to um, just how enduring the relationship is that kids have with authors that, you know, even though they had done this in fifth grade, these kids were eighth graders and they had figured out a way to come and meet this author that they'd already formed a relationship with. That to me is what an open book foundation does that other organizations aren't quite able to do. They're able to sort of latch on to the idea that the love of reading is the most important thing at the bottom line. And if you can find ways to in, in, um, to encourage children to take the chance to try to fall in love with books, they will. And I've seen it every single year and I, I'm positive that I will continue to see that every single year. So I am grateful to an Open Book Foundation for helping me to fulfill my mission with my students. Thank you so much, Hope. 
So thank you. Thank you all for listening today. And um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me or Hope. Uh, this is our information and we'd be happy to answer questions and talk to you more about an Open Book Foundation. Thanks so much. <laughs>